Okay, so I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of advice for solving acoustics problems. Um, there's going to be some acoustic problems in the homework that I just posted, and there will also be some acoustic problems on uh, the midterm exam and the final exam. So it's a good thing to just be comfortable with these. So I just have a little bit of advice of so something that helps me when I'm solving these problems. You may or may not find it useful, but um, but I do think it's helpful. So. One thing that I think is useful to keep in mind is that the problems that you're going to see on the homework and the midterm are going to be much easier to solve if you remember what the units are for each measure and then what those units mean. Okay, so you need to know the units and what those units actually mean. And so here's what I mean by that. So for example, with frequency, this is one of the metrics we used. These are all metrics used to describe waves. And they're all the kinds of metrics that I'm going to have you solve problems in. So you'll see this on the homework. So frequency, if you remember, is denoted by little f. And frequency is given in the units of hertz. Sometimes it'll be kilohertz, which is 1,000 hertz. Um, but it's given in some sort of hertz metric. And hertz stands for cycles per second. Okay, So if you just write the problem out as hertz, it's kind of easy to make a mistake on whether you're dealing with kilohertz or hertz or, or whatever. But if you just write it out as cycles per second, then it can help you see the relationship between this and other variables. So um, remember, keep in mind that one cycle is equal to one wave. Um, so another way of saying frequency is to say the number of waves per second. And the next metric we talked about, the next um, descriptive metric for waves, is the period, denoted by big T. And the period is a duration. And usually the period is given in seconds, but it'll it could be given in any different duration metric. It could be seconds or minutes or whatever. Um, so check the units on it. But when you think about those units, again, think about what they mean. So here you might write out seconds per cycle, right? So if it's, if it's given to you in seconds, then you can think about it as seconds per cycle. And so it's basically saying how many seconds per wave. And if you look at this, you can really see. So we talked about how frequency and period are the inverse of each other. And you can really see that here. So you can see that frequency is cycles per second and period is seconds per cycle. Right? So if you have a frequency that is 100 cycles per second, that means there's 100 waves for every second. And that must mean that the period of each of those waves is 1 hundredth of a second. Right? So it's intuitive, and again, you don't need to remember the formula for frequency equals 1 over t if you can just remember that they're the inverse of each other. Okay, so the next descriptive metric we talked about is the wavelength, denoted by lambda. And the wavelength is some distance metric, so it's usually given in meters, but maybe it would be given in inches or centimeters, and you just do the conversion. Um, but if whichever metric it's in, you can think about that as distance per cycle. So if it's given to you in meters, you would say meters per cycle. So this is basically just how long is one wave. That's what wavelength literally means, right? What is the length of a single wave? So by writing it as meters per cycle, we're saying the number of meters per wave cycle. Right? So it's redundant with the name wavelength, but if you write it out this way, again, it just helps you um, keep in mind the relationships between these variables. And then the next metric was speed of sound. Um, this is denoted as little c. And this is some sort of rate, right? It's some sort of speed. And uh, it's usually, sorry, I misspelled usually there. <laughs> it's usually um, given in meters per second, but it could be um, inches per second. It could be in whatever metric, feet per second. Uh, but if it's in meters per second, then um, you're good to go. You can see that we're already ready to start converting between these different metrics.
So if you remember what these units mean, um, so the units and then the long version of these units that I just gave you in red, you don't even need to memorize those formulas that we, that we talked about earlier. Um, and these are formulas that I want you to know for the exams. Um, I'm going to give you, for, the, for a lot of the complicated problems we'll do, for Bayesian updating and information theory and such like that, I'll give you the formulas. Um, but for these kinds of formulas, they're just so easy that uh, it's useful for you to just have to remember them. And instead of memorizing the formulas, you can just remember what these metrics mean, and you don't even need to memorize them because you can just arrange everything in such a way that, that things cancel out and leave you with the units that you need and that's the answer to your problem. So I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. So let's say I ask this simple question. What is the wavelength of a 1500 hertz sound in air? And um, if you can look this up in your notes, if this is on a homework problem, I'll have you look it up on your notes. If it's on the midterm or the final exam, then I will give you the speed of sound in air or in water or whatever is relevant, because I don't expect you to memorize that. Um, but for here, it's a given 340 meters per second. Okay, so when you're solving a problem like this, the first thing that's useful to do is to just write down what you know, what you've been given. So first thing we've been given is we've been given the speed of sound in air, which is 340 meters per second. Okay, we write that down. We've also been given a frequency, which is 1500 cycles per second. Okay, so we write that down. And we're working towards a wavelength, right? And wavelength is up here. That's going to be in meters per cycle, right? So we're working our way towards coming up with an answer that's going to be in meters per cycle. Okay, so if you just look at this right now, you can see that we have all the elements in place. We have meters and seconds and cycles and seconds, and we're aiming towards meters per cycle. So we need our seconds to cancel out, leaving us with meters per cycle and then we're good to go. So in order to get the seconds to cancel out, you can see that you need to divide this meters per second by 1500 cycles per second, right? You need to divide that in order to get these seconds to cancel out, leaving you with meters per cycle. But for me, it's always been easier, instead of doing the division here, is for me to just take the reciprocal so that I can multiply everything together. So here I would have taken the reciprocal and turned that into 1 over 1500, and now we're in seconds per cycle. And now you can see we're ready to go. We can cancel these out, and we'll be left with meters per cycle. Okay, this is the exact same thing as doing the division. It's just another way to write it out that for me just makes it easier. So now we're ready to multiply these things together um, and uh, then we can cancel out the seconds and we can plug that into our calculator. And um, so we would multiply 340 times 1500 um, and then the hit the one over X button, right? So you're taking the reciprocal of that or you just divide 340 by 1500 Either way, you're getting the same answer, which is uh, 0.227 meters per cycle. So you could have just gone and looked up the formula for wavelength, and it would have told you that the formula is C divided by F, right? And that's exactly what we did. There's C, and we divided it by F, right? We did that by taking the reciprocal. Um, and so we got the right answer, but we didn't have to look up the formula. So it's just a good, quick, and dirty way to do this without having to memorize those formulas. Uh, maybe you will try to memorize them, but if you forget it on the exam, just remember that you can figure it out this way instead. Um, so I'll give you another quick example. So this one, again, we're aiming for wavelength. In this case, I want you to do it in centimeters. So I'm often going to do that on the homework. Um, you'll see that, that I ask you to do things in different um, units because I want you to be able to move between units. So what is the wavelength in centimeters of a wave with 0.02 seconds period in the air? So it has a 0.02 second long period uh, in the air. And you already know what the speed of sound in air is here. So again, we write down what we know. We know 340 meters per, spec per second is the speed of sound in air. And in this case, we're dealing with um, uh, period here, so we'll write down the period. We know that it's 0.02 seconds per cycle, right? So we're writing period in the long way as seconds per cycle. 
And again, we're working towards um, wavelength, but in this case, we need the wavelength in centimeters. So you can think about it as we're working towards figuring out the, the wavelength as centimeters per cycle. So you can see here now that we need a conversion. We need to be able to go from centimeters to meters in order to get everything to cancel out. Um, so you can throw that in, right? So there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so you can throw that conversion right in there and take care of it all at once. Um, you could do the conversion at the end. It doesn't really matter, but we're going to throw it all in there. So now we've written down everything we need to know to get to this final answer. And um, if we do that, you can see now that we can cancel out the seconds, we can cancel out the meters, um, and we'll be good to go. Um, so let's go ahead and multiply all these things together, cancel out our seconds, cancel out our meters, and now we just multiply these three values together and we'll be left with centimeters per cycle. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get 680 centimeters a cycle. And again, you could have looked up the formula and it would have told you that wavelength is equal to CT. And that's basically what we did, right? So um, there's our speed of sound and there's our period. And we multiplied those two things together. We did this other conversion too, but that's the main thing we did. And that left us with the answer we need, right? So the other thing, again, you can see so clearly that here we have seconds per cycle in the first problem I gave you and um, seconds per cycle in the second problem I gave you. So again, just pointing out that um, frequency and period are the reciprocal of each other. Um, so in the first case, we were given frequency, so we had to flip it over and turn it into a period in order to solve this problem, whereas in the lower one, we just left it as a period and were able to solve it. Um, so. I think that this method helps um, even if you do use the formulas, if you look them up or if you remember them, writing it out this way just to make sure that all your units cancel is a good way to just make sure that you've dotted your I's and crossed your T's and that you have everything correct, right? So you can use it as a way to double check yourself if nothing else. Uh, but I think it's a useful way to do it. Um, and it, the more complicated the problem is, the more useful this method is for me. So um, again, if you need any help with your homework, then uh, feel free to come to office hours, my office hours, or the office hours of Anna or Allie, the TAs. Um, but when you come to office hours, we want to see that you've already tried to solve the problems in the homework. So if you show up with a blank sheet for homework, then um, we're not going to work through it with you. That's, it's not fair, but it's also um, just, it's a terrible way to learn it. It's way better for you to struggle with it yourself if this is stuff is hard for you, to just try to work through it yourself using this kind of logic. Um, and see if you can come up with the answer. And if you still are struggling and if you still want to come talk to us about it, then come on in and we can try to guide you towards the correct answer. Um, but if you haven't taken a stab at it, then, um, then we can't help you yet. That would, you wouldn't learn anything. So, um, so uh, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. And uh, yeah, best of luck with your homework.